Hello and welcome to another video. Today I will be continuing to talk about my liquid cooled build chaos. It is going to be a small series so look out for other videos coming up soon. I hope you subscribe to my channel and encourage me to do more. So about chaos, did everything go alright with my build when I started? Oh no, there are always some things that go wrong. I will list them out today so that you are aware of them and if possible can avoid them. I will also list some potential issues that you may come across and would suggest that you research as much as possible. First on the list, availability of components. In my case, because I had chosen the Thermaltake CL360, it took quite some time for it to reach me. I had to import various other connectors bending kits and others through amazon.com i had also bought thermaltake's pressure equalizer stop plug this will help in air bleeding as well so whatever is left of the air inside your loop can slowly bleed out and you can fill in some more coolant i bought a few bixki components through a website in india smcinternational.in i had ordered the bixki gpu water block for my asus rog strix vega 64 8GB OC edition through AliExpress in 2019. Please remember, the water blocks are different for each model. So a reference card's water block may not fit the AIB models. You will have to check up on the exact model and see if it has a water block. Another important compatibility check is the size of the tubings you want. Based on this, your connectors will need to be chosen or vice versa. For example, if you have tubes with an external or outer diameter of 16mm and internal diameter of 12mm, then you would have to select the connectors or fittings accordingly. There are other tube sizes as well, like Corsairs, which are 10mm internal diameter and 14mm outer diameter. Next up was the decision of the kit. In my case, the choice of Thermaltake CL360 was because of the inclusion of copper components like the radiator and the D5 pump. Selecting between the D5 and the DDC pumps is another decision we will have to make. The D5 pumps have higher flow rates at lower pressure, while DDC have higher pressure but lower flow rates. DDC pumps are a little louder than the D5 pumps. DDCs can also run hotter. I have included a link in the description below for reference purposes. Now for the differences between copper and aluminium components. Please do not mix. There will be galvanic corrosion when one mixes copper and nickel in a liquid cooling loop with aluminium parts and aluminium will get damaged. Nickel plated ones will also get damaged. Again, I have included a link in the description below for reference purposes. Now, do you need water blocks for additional components like GPU, motherboard VRM, and motherboard chipset. If you need a GPU water block, then does it come with a backplate or is it compatible with the stock backplate? Is the backplate important for you? Is it for aesthetic purpose? Does it matter functionally? These are some of the questions you will have to answer for yourself. Would you want to mix and match components like blocks, coolants, tubes, connectors? Is it worth having the additional cost over a kit? Normally, a kit would be cheaper than the sum of individual parts. Does the D5 pump or reservoir you have selected have enough ports? Is having three ports enough? Or are the placement of the ports important? For example, Thermaltake PR22 has three ports in total. One inlet at top, one air bleeding port and one outlet at bottom. In my case, because of this arrangement, drainage valve could not be fit to the reservoir pump. Drainage valve is recommended by many to be fit to the pump or reservoir based on the placement of course, since it is usually the lowest point in the loop and it can be drained effectively. Because I needed space for the drainage valve, I fit the radiator which was a 360mm a little towards the top. That meant my drainage valve was not at the absolute lowest point in the loop. So, there was liquid remaining in the pipes after drainage. I had to lean the case quite a lot and open up some pipes again to drain the distilled water. That means, 
another avenue for leakage later and so you would have to do another leak test after filling it up again. This is not ideal. There were mounting options for the pump horizontally also but because I had already bent the pipes and I did not have the patience to do it all over again. Next on the list, is your pump PWM compatible? Can it be controlled through your motherboard? Mine is kind of controlled but you'll have to set the speed on the bottom of the pump or reservoir and once installed it cannot be accessed again. So I have set it to a 3 out of 5. It is also said by some people that at first set it at 5 to bleed the air out. It has taken me a month to bleed the air out now. It is also better if the pump has connectors to the motherboard which will help you control the speed of the pump through the BIOS or through software in the OS. Also, do you have a water temp monitor? This helps you to monitor the temperature of the water. It can let you know if your water is getting too hot also. You can also invest in a temp display that you need to connect between the pipes. Are there options in the market with connectors to the motherboard which can help monitor through BIOS or software? We'll have to check that out as well. Next up, do you have enough coolant? Once you measure how much distilled water is being used in the loop, you will know the quantity of the coolant you will require. Based on this, you can make the purchase. Be advised, however, that your loop would be open in that time and availability at this time can be a hit or a miss. Choice of coolant is another piece of the puzzle. Since I did not get the thermal take coolant outside of the kit, availability in India is kind of non-existent here. I went with the Corsair XL5 clear coolants. Now what are the type of coolants? There are clear coolants, dyed coolants, pastel coolants and others. According to what I read on Reddit, forums and YouTube, the pastel coolants tend to leave residue and you might have a lower cycle time as in draining, cleaning and filling again. I wanted to go with clear coolants which are safer. And I also had to research on the constituents of the coolants and compatibility issues, if any, with the PETG tubes I was using. Since I was using the kit, there would have been no compatibility issues, but I couldn't find extra coolant, only one liter is provided in the kit. I had to purchase the Corsair ones after ensuring compatibility with the Thermaltic PETG tubes. According to reports, Corsair coolants are Mayhem's coolants and Mayhem's normally has documentation about its products. Many manufacturers do not have clear documentation in this space. I then used the thermaltic color, red in my case, with a clear coolant. Now, another issue for me was, I forgot to take out the plastic stoppers from the radiator before installation. They started leaking when I filled in the coolant. Not with the distilled water, but after everything was done and coolant was filled in. Anyway, I had to somehow take them out and replace them with the thermaltic metal stoppers. About the devices you choose, try to select something without proprietary connectors. The Thermaltic ones are all with 9 pin proprietary pins and one can only use them with the supplied controllers or the TT Premium Sync ones. It reduces flexibility and if something in your loop is incompatible, you are stuck. Also, there might be compatibility issues with the lighting. Be aware of all the issues with the ARGB, RGB lightings and connectors for them if you do not want to go mad later. In my case, I found out that the Thermaltake ones may be incompatible and not work on Ryzen platforms, something to do with the USB headers routing through chipset which are not supported by Thermaltake software. And by the way, the most grief I received was with the ARGB. For that, I have another video. Anyway. Thank you for watching and hopefully you will join me again for another video. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Thank you and have a brilliant one. Bye-bye.